quite often you have a situation where uh, you're working with a another manufacturer's device and you're trying to integrate it to a PLC or a PAC or a controller they all have manuals for their hardware and their software but that doesn't mean that it's easy to get your way in there and get started the whole idea with this video is that we're going to take an AMCI sample program for the SMD 17 E2 it could be the 23 or the 34 NEMA as well. It's, it's basically the same sample program. We're going to take it, download it, and open it up, and then we're going to start modifying it to get it to work. And um, I, I always, when I'm doing something like this, I get the device to do something, to get it to do anything, and then I look at what I did, and then I start duplicating it until I get it to do everything I want it to do. So in this, in this video, I'm not going to do everything. What I'm going to do is, like I said, download the program and open it up. So we're going to start with the program open. Then I'm going to go in and start explaining what you need to modify to get just the bare essentials. All I want to do is get some movement of the axes using their code. I'm going to, I'm going to have to add a few instructions because there's no hooks in between the outside world and the code, which means I'm going to have to add some logic that connects to an input so I can push a button and get it to do what I want it to do. We'll get it to do a little bit of motion, then we'll stop, and then we'll start another video later doing more with that sample program. The first thing that we did for this next discussion is that we downloaded the sample programs from the AMCI website for the SMD17E2. And if you look up at the top here in the title bar, Logics Designer SM2 underscore EDS underscore AOI add-on instruction sample ArsLogics version 31. That's the project that we downloaded and then I opened it, but after I opened it, then I went to the processor or the, ch the uh, controller properties and I changed the controller to match the exact controller that I have. So I didn't don't even remember now what they had for a controller or revision level. Actually, it was 31, revision 31. I have a L7 ERM compact logic, so I changed it to that and then the rev level that I'm using typically is 35. Now there's a newer one, but it hasn't changed enough. I left it 35. Then I went to the main program, the main routine, and I opened it up. Now you need to go there, do this, and then read these comments up here. These comments are very important. I'm not going to go through them and discuss them, but what we have in this main routine is a group of functions, logic that will execute functions. Now, this first comment, that's an anchor for a comment. And I do this myself. I'll create a tag, a dent, 32 bits, called comment. And then I use the bits 0 through 31 to anchor comments. So any place I want to comment and I don't want it to move, I want it to stay right there in the logic. I will use a unconditional true rung to an OTE and I will reference it to the tag comment decimal point and then zero through 31. Okay, enough of that. So we go down and look, first of all, and, we, and you can read all of these comments it's important but this is a get system variable this is looking up something about that axis instance name now we're not going to use amc smd 17e2 we're going to do something different matter of fact while i'm there i'll just double click on that i'll drop this down and when you see something like this this is good because it's familiar so i want to make this the x axis notice what happens up here when i click on that puppy because I named that axes or that stepper unit x axes underscore left right. Because on my 
little CNC looking fixture that I think I purchased from Sane Smart that I adapted all this to. I got the back and forth being, or left and right being the X axis. Now, when I click on this, now you see it's a happy rung. This file right here is all going to be referenced to that single axis. Now we have three axes. You can see down here, X, Y, and Z. You would have to create these rungs of logic for each of those axes. Now this is the important part to see. Uh, well, this is the, it's basically a status bit. It's F, S for first scan bit. And in the older, it, it was just, I don't remember the exact memory location, but anyway, this is the first scan bit. This is used for housekeeping. This wrong, <clears throat> this bit will only be true for one program scan at the first scan. When you go from program to run, or you go into the run mode on the very first scan, this will go true and it will perform these functions. Now notice that these don't match. See, it says undefined tag. This is a defined tag, but this one is not defined. That means it's going to be output command word zero from X axis left, right. So this is looking at the communication status. And the whole purpose here is to, if you're at zero, which means you're not running any of these, see source zero, you're going to move a zero into here and it's going to clear anything that was in there. So you had one through nine in this register. This on the very first scan will put it at zero. Testing. One way to determine, because remember this is a sample program. I did not create this. This is available from AMCI. So there's already logic written. All you have to do is replace the tags that don't that aren't defined with something that is defined. So this tag up here, X axis left, right, that was from a basically a if you want to call it a module defined tag that I created when I added that SMD 17 E2 to my project and named it X axis left right, I took the class of objects, SMD 17 E2, and I created an instance called X axis underscore left right. And then I entered that here, and then this became a happy wrong. This wrong's not happy because there are tag names in here, or rather I should say text that aren't a tag. So if I over mouse this one, mouse over it. Now notice that this is the tag and it's an integer. It could have been a double integer, but because dense double integers, that's the native data type for this product. But an integer is fine because we only have really 10 values, zero through nine. So later on, as we execute this program, if we want to run a relative move, we move a one into this tag. Okay. This one is undefined because recognize MCI SMD 17 E2, which we replaced up here. So I could replace this text right here with X axis left, right. And then this rung should be happy. So I'm going to put my cursor right here and I'm going to put in X axis underscore left, right. Watch what happens when I hit the T bang. See how that turned reverse video. It immediately recognizes that tag is already in the controller tag database. So if we hit enter, we got a happy rung. So that's what you're going to do initially is go through and any place you see an unhappy rung, you're going to find a tag that's undefined. There's one right there. So you, we could go through and do some sort of slick move where we look for AMCI SMD 17 and replace it with X axis underscore left, right. And that would take care of everything, but you really should do these one at a time, just so you um, can wrap your head around this. Now notice this one is already defined. That one is not. Now, one thing I can do is I can go up here, double click and go control C to copy, then come down here, 
double click, grab just the name of the total tag, control V, when I hit enter, it's a happy wrong. Remember, these tags that were already defined, they're part of the project that was built for you. So I'm gonna go down through and uh, change all of these that need to be changed and and then come back. Okay, there's an unhappy tag there. And all I need to do, highlight that, control V, and you got a happy rung. So I'm just gonna zip down through here and let you watch this. Then I'll try to edit out some of the time space to make it a little bit more palatable to listen to. Another way you could have done this is instead of naming this X axis underscore left, right, you could have put that other uh, piece of text in there, the AMCI SMD 17 E2, but then that wouldn't work out if you had multiple axes because each tag structure has to have a unique name. So there you have editing the main routine to work with the an axis. Although I can't say for sure how much of this sample program I'm going to exercise, I'm going to go through and clean up all of the tags. Otherwise, when I try to verify it and download it, I'll get uh, some pushback, some grief. I went to the main program assembled blend, and I'm gonna go through and do the same thing that I did in the main routine. I'm gonna find Wherever there are tags that have the original tag name, I'm going to grab those and replace them with all of the rungs in this small routine. The symbol blend are now happy rungs. We'll go to the axis follower linear and any place where I see a tag that is not defined. See, these are all defined. This one is not. I highlight the portion that we changed, paste in what's new, same thing here, and now that's all happy. All of the routines now in the main program are happy. We'll go to this follower circular and see what we have to deal with in there and I see one right there, right here, and I think we're happy now. So we'll go ahead and try to download this. We'll verify first. Zero errors, zero warnings. That's good. Now we go to communications, who active, let it go out and look, Ethernet IP driver, and we're looking at 40. That's the device we're doing, but we're actually working with 131. That's the address of our controller to see if it's there. It helps to have the ethernet cable plugged into the controller. I had it unplugged so the controller wouldn't override the dashboard that we were using earlier. So now we download. I didn't notice <clears throat> that we had a couple warnings and actually this is fine. We don't want to execute those two. What it's saying is that in the main routine, there are no JSRs that jump to assemble blend or access follower linear. But as far as errors go, there were no errors. Now we're online in the run mode with the unit testing. The goal here is to get the device reacting to what you think it's going to do as quickly as possible, meaning with the minimum amount of effort. Basically what I do when I work on things, I get it to do something and then I get it to do two things and then I just keep adding until it does everything that I want. I went through and I changed the tags on this sample program from AMCI. The next thing I did was to go in and add some logic. The next thing I did was to go in and add some logic. What I wanted to do is I wanted to be able to jog it. I went to the jog instructions. Remember, these are add-on instructions that were created for or by AMCI. And so this rung says, and here's your, your codes here, if you like, one through nine. And of course, zero means don't do anything. 
two is run clockwise jog, and three is run counterclockwise jog. You see that this is a clockwise jog move, and so we need to get a two in here, and when we get a two in there, then it will run clockwise. I added two rungs of logic, and I attached the instruction that moves a two into this register. I'm controlling it with input zero on my uh, digital field device simulator. And then when I release the button, I have a one shot that puts a zero back into SMD, well, back into this run command. In a lot of cases, once you turn the dogs loose, they're loose. So if I put a two in there, even though I let go of this button, it's gonna, the two's gonna stay there and it's gonna keep jogging. If you want it to jog when you push the button and then when you release the button, stop jogging, then when it goes false, you one shot a zero in there. And of course, you could eliminate the one shot. And when you hold the button down, it jogs. And when you let up, it moves a zero in there. The problem is, if we want to do more than one move, we can't have this button, when it's not pushed, continually putting a zero in there because then it won't do anything except just that one jog. Then I went down to the counterclockwise and did the exact same thing with a different input. And this can be easily demonstrated. And that's the entirety of what I did. I've not changed anything else. So now we're going to give this a try. So when I push input zero and it's going to put a two in there, it should jog in one direction. I'm going to do that now. You can see it jog fairly slowly. I think I'll speed that up. So I'll go up here to the clockwise jog and it's got 1250 for program speed. I'll change that to 5000 and I'll go down to the counterclockwise jog and make it 5000. Those aren't good speeds if you were actually doing an application, but I want it to be obvious in the video that it's moving. So let's try clockwise again. And now counterclockwise. Well, that works. I remember all I did was I went in and changed the tag to match what I named it when I added it to the project. And then I went in and replaced all of the tags that were undefined with this name right here, X axis underscore left, right. And I could just type in a three here and it'll jog until I punch in a zero. I just added logic to do that with push buttons. So far, so good.